Today we're going to look at our final lesson in our unit on magnetism and static electricity. And we've spent the last several lessons talking about magnets, magnetism, all these different properties that we've learned about magnets, but today we're going to actually focus on the static electricity portion of this unit. Now to begin this lesson, I want to talk first about electricity in general and what it is. Now, we've talked about the different parts that make up atoms, the protons, which have a positive charge, the neutrons, which have no charge, but there's also those particles called electrons that orbit the nucleus of the atom and have a negative charge. And electricity occurs as a result of these negatively charged electrons. Now, electricity can exist in a couple different states, and that's what we want to briefly talk about are the two states of electricity. The first state of electricity is the one that comes to mind for most people when they think about electrical energy, and that's electrical current. And electrical current is actually the movement or the flow of these electrons through a conductive material. When we look at power lines, when we look at plugging something into the outlet and powering it, we're looking at electrical current flowing through those power lines, flowing through those cords into our devices to power them. We looked at electrical current a lot last year when we did our energy unit, but today we're going to be focusing more on the second type of electricity, and that is static electricity. Now instead of being caused by moving and flowing electrons like electrical current, static electricity is the buildup of electrons that creates an electric charge on an object or in a substance. Very often when we have a static charge, it's the result of friction. As certain materials rub together, they create that friction, and in this process, electrons will move from one object onto the other. And because electrons have this negative charge, if you get extra electrons on an object, it's going to give that object a negative charge or a static charge. Now one example we can talk about with static electricity that I think most people can relate to is walking across the carpeted floor with socks on. You move around on that carpet, your feet and your socks are rubbing against the carpet, and then when you touch somebody or you touch a door, you get that tiny little shock. It doesn't hurt you, but it gets your attention. And that is actually the discharge of that static buildup. Because as you're moving around on the floor with your socks on, you're gaining electrons from the carpet. It's giving your body that negative charge. And then as soon as you touch something that's somewhat conductive, that electrical charge will flow out of you into the other object. So you touch that doorknob, you get that shock, that's just those electrons flowing back out that you picked up by friction. You touch somebody and you shock them a little bit, that's just discharging those electrons, discharging that static electricity. Sometimes when the static electricity is discharged, you may even notice a little spark. And it's not anything to be worried about, it's just again, it's that electrical charge, those electrons being discharged from your body, flowing into a conductive material or another person, as the case may be. Now, on a larger scale, lightning is another form of static electricity. And certainly, you know, this is a lot more of that electric charge that's built up, that static charge that's built up being released, being discharged. But again, lightning's happening because of static electricity, because of that buildup and that release of electrons. Now, unlike static charges that build up on our bodies or on objects around our home, a lightning bolt can have up to one billion volts of electricity, which is why lightning can be so dangerous, and that's why we never want to be outside in a lightning storm, because that's certainly far more electricity than our bodies can handle. Now the other interesting thing, though, about static electricity is the way that it's really very similar to magnets, and that's why we cover both of these in the same unit. We talk about magnetism and static electricity together because they behave in a very similar way. And you see the picture of the two balloons, and it looks like the one balloon's pushing the other away. Now, if these were magnets, we would say the two magnets are repelling one another. But that's actually what's happening with the balloons. But instead of magnetism, it's happening because of a negative charge, because of static electricity. We mentioned that when something gains electrons, when it builds that static charge, that's a negative charge. So if we have an object with static electricity, we have a negatively charged object. Now, when something gives up electrons to something that's getting the static charge, that, that object becomes positively charged because now it has more protons and fewer electrons. So because of that, it works almost like the poles of a magnet with electric charges. 
you have a positive charge, you have a negative charge, but the positive and negative charges will tend to attract. But negative and negative, as you see with the two balloons, or if you had a positive and positively charged object, those would repel one another. So we're actually able to not only attract and repel other objects using magnets, we're able to attract and repel objects using electric charge. That's the reason too why sometimes if you have like a piece of plastic or maybe socks out of a dryer or something like that, you'll notice you have objects that tend to, to stick together or tend to even stick to your hands sometimes. It's not because of, you know, glue or tape or things that we think of as being sticky, it's because of the difference in electrical charges. A charged object can stick to another object, can attract to another object because of those opposite charges. As we look at some activities that go with this lesson, we'll be looking at how we can generate static electricity, but we'll also be looking at how we can attract and repel other objects, again, creating motion, not using magnetism this time, but using static charges, static electricity.